manager or entrepreneur. Entrepreneur or manager. There is quite a bit confusion in this question. For example, I've heard some entrepreneurs calling themselves managers. And conversely, I've heard some managers calling themselves entrepreneurs. So, is there a difference between these two concepts? If there is, then what is it? But before we continue discussing this topic, I would like to share with you a very interesting experiment that scientists conducted over 20 years ago. The point of this experiment was that they took an individual suffering from some disease and showed him to three different specialists. The first specialist was cardiologist, an expert in heart diseases. The second specialist was a hematologist, an expert in blood disorders. And the third was an infectious disease specialist. What surprised the scientists was that the diagnoses made by these specialists tended to align with their respective areas of practice. So what does it mean? It means that the cardiologist had a tendency to diagnose conditions related to heart disease more often. The hematologist had a tendency to diagnose conditions related to blood disorders. And the infectious disease specialist saw some symptoms of an infectious disease. And if we blow this story out of proportion, it can be said that we choose the disease we will treat ourselves. This is largely determined by which specialist we go to. So, if we go to a cardiologist, there is a chance that we will be treated for heart disease, to a hematologist for a blood disorders, and to an infectious specialist, there is a chance that we will be treated for infectious disease. And this whole idea comes down to the fact that experts, regardless of the knowledge level in their corresponding field, tend to adopt a particular point of view on patient's problem. And from this point of view, they look at the patient and his problems, even though it may have nothing to do with the actual problem the patient has. This tendency to fixate on one point of view, where the expert or specialist has experience, education, and knowledge, can sometimes let them down. In the case of entrepreneurship, we can assume that both the entrepreneur and the manager will identify different diagnoses. They will often look at the same problem from completely opposite points of view and frequently use different tools. They will see different causes for these problems and probably use different methods and even different abilities. We're not saying which approach is better or which point of view is better. In fact, there are many situations where the manager's point of view is more effective and yields better results than any other point of view. However, there are specific situations where the entrepreneur's point of view is more effective and productive and it can take the entire business to a completely different level. Hello, my name is Yaroslav Kaplan, and you are now on the Business Intelligence Channel, a new intellectual channel for entrepreneurs. Today's episode is entirely dedicated to the topic of the difference between an entrepreneur and a manager. So, Howard Stevenson, a professor at Harvard Business School, provided a very interesting definition of entrepreneurship. He believed that entrepreneurship is about seeking new opportunities beyond controlled resources. Consequently, management is more associated with overseeing already available resources. The fundamental difference here is that if a person is inclined to manage controlled resources and make them more efficient or use them more efficiently, According to this definition, they are more aligned with managers. Correspondingly, if a person is inclined to find new opportunities and new resources 
often those not under their control, then in this definition, they would be considered entrepreneurs. Howard Stevenson clearly distinguished these two concepts. If someone is more prone to focus on already available resources, then this person is more likely to be a manager. On the other hand, if the focus is on exploring new opportunities using resources not yet obtained, it aligns more with the definition of entrepreneur. I agree with Howard Stevenson's point of view, and I would be interested in your thoughts on this matter. Please leave your comments under this video. So, the first factor that distinguishes the entrepreneur from the manager is the focus of attention. This is just the first factor, but not the only one. The second factor I could name is who sets the goals for a person. Well, let's take a manager. In order for him to effectively manage the resources under their control, he must receive goals from someone. And based on these goals, he develops a whole set of evaluation criteria, determining whether he is managing these resources effectively or conversely not. Well, the question is, where can a manager get these goals from? First of all, they can get them from organizational policies, rules, etc. The key point here is that a manager typically gets the goals of their activities from someone else. We're not saying whether this is good or bad. We're just stating the technical fact that a manager most often gets the goals of their activities and, consequently, the criteria for evaluating this activity from someone else. On the other hand, for an entrepreneur, it's quite the opposite. They have no one else who can set the goals of their activities for them, except themselves. In order for an entrepreneur to choose their goal and the evaluation criteria that are associated with achieving that goal, they need to create that goal. They need to see it, to come up with it. In other words, they have to make it themselves. And this is the second fundamental factor that distinguishes an entrepreneur from a manager. Who sets the goal of a person's activities. And now, we've come to the third factor that significantly defines the difference between an entrepreneur and a manager. I would name this third factor as the ability to recognize various market conditions. We've talked many times about how an entrepreneur focuses his attention outside the organization on new markets, new customers, and new resources, which they often do not yet control. Consequently, they need to extensively research their environment for this. Entrepreneurs rarely call this activity research, but in fact, they are indeed engaged in it. Entrepreneurs engage in the exploration of their surroundings, market research, and the exploration of everything where they could find new opportunities and resources. Here we could say that there is a fundamental difference between two types of activities, between resource exploitation, which is typical for managers, and, on the other hand, research activities, which are common for entrepreneurs. I really like telling a story dedicated to this ability of a person to recognize through an interesting metaphor on one interesting historical example. They say that one day, Michelangelo was walking through the market in search of a stone for his new statue. And he was searching for a long time and couldn't find a suitable stone until he saw the perfect stone for his future sculpture in one store. He entered the store and asked the owner about the price of the stone. And when the store owner saw that someone was interested in this stone, he was very surprised. He exclaimed, You're the first person who has shown interest in this stone in the last 12 years. No one has been interested in it. It's just been taking up space here. And I don't see any potential in this stone. You can have it for free. Michelangelo thanked the store owner, took the stone, 
and worked on it for almost a year. And when he had finished his statue, he invited the store owner to show the completed sculpture. When the store owner saw the sculpture, he exclaimed, Oh my God, how did you manage to create this beauty? And where did you find this marvelous stone? Michelangelo responded, Don't you recognize this stone that you gave me for free, as you had no use for it? This moment emphasizes the master's ability to recognize. The master looks at the stone, sees their future sculpture, their future masterpiece, recognizes its potential, and utilizes that potential regardless of whether others see it or not. This is the ability of recognition that master possess. There is nothing to add to this. From this point of view, a person's ability to recognize is a key skill or key factor for success in entrepreneurship. For example, when a person looks at a pile of stones, they may see it as a pile of garbage, or they may see it as a valuable building material. Depending on what a person can see in this pile of stones, even though it's the same pile of stones in both cases, there is a pile of stones here and pile of stones there, but in one case, this is a valuable building material which can be used for constructing something. And in the other, it's simply a pile of trash taking up space. The ability of entrepreneur to see value, unrecognized by the others, find something they can use to their advantage is crucial for an entrepreneur. To sum up this video, I would like to name three key factors that distinguish an entrepreneur from a manager once more. The first factor is the focus of attention. Managers' focus often lies inside the organization, while entrepreneurs direct their attention outside the organization's boundaries to search for new opportunities. The second factor is who gets the goals of one's activities. We have already discussed that managers often receive their goals from other people, while entrepreneurs mostly create such goals by themselves. The third and final factor is one's ability to recognize various market conditions. Typically, managers do not excel at this and are better at recognizing opportunities within organization with the resources they control, while entrepreneurs are quite often capable of finding new opportunities and resources outside the organization. Dear friends, that's all for now. I would like to say goodbye to you, and in my next video, I will talk about differences between entrepreneurial tasks and managerial tasks. See you soon.